Dorothy Guining with Scrapbook in Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I'm going to be creating a 12 by 12 layout featuring Heidi Swap's Sun Chaser collection. Here's my jumping off point. It's a super fun eight and a half by 11 page created by Rachel Tallman. She is one of my Scrapbook Nerd design teammates. I absolutely love her work but it is really different than mine. I am graphic and clean and she is organic and messy and she also creates that look with amazing ease. I thought it would be fun to see what a Dorothy spin would look like on a Rachel layout and her process video will be linked up below in case you missed it. Here is what I'm going to be using. I have material from the Sun Chaser collection paired with white cardstock just like Rachel. I added charcoal cardstock to the mix as well because that's what I do. I often add pops of charcoal or black or navy, something bold, because this helps create a graphic look, and that's my style. This collection is available at the Scrapbook Nerd online shop, so I'm going to link up the shop, the collection, along with a few stamp sets I use in the description box below. So here's what's on my desk. I'm starting with that rainbow paper, just like Rachel. Now I knew I was going to be using it, so I cut into it in advance. Now for me, I created a frame style foundation with three sheets of paper. I gutted two of them. One of those papers as well is that gray cardstock. Rachel, what she did was she sewed a frame around her page, and she often does that but I often make these frame style foundations. Actually, there is a tutorial on my channel where I explain how I do that, so that will be linked up below. And you can see I already cut out with scissors in advance those two rainbow corners, just like Rachel, and I use the paper that I gutted from behind the foundation page. Also in advance, I matted those two photos in the charcoal cardstock. Again, something I often do. Now I have a handful of scraps from this collection handy as well. Now Rachel in her video explained she didn't want to cut into anything new to add layers behind her photo, so she was just going to use scraps. Great idea, especially with that rainbow paper because all of the colors are already there. Super easy to match up, so my scraps are different than hers, but we both use scraps from the collection. And in this tray, I have all of my embellishments from this collection as well, and you'll see me play with those a little bit later on. So I'm going to continue with my foundation page now. So what I'm going to do first, I end up trimming that rainbow corner for the top of the page. So mine's going to be a little bit more stubbier than Rachel's. And before adhering it, I'm just going to apply a bit of ink. So the ink I'm using is Morning Mist by Versifying Claire, and I end up just correcting a little bump that I thought was on that green part of the rainbow and added a bit more ink and now I'm just adhering them to the page. Once those are down, now I'm going to continue with the beginnings actually of the embellishment process already. So Rachel always starts her embellishment process with a doily. Now I didn't have any doily so I showed you a punch there from Creative Memories. It's basically a six inch scallop circle punch. So with one of the scraps I cut out a giant scallop circle. That's going to be my doily. And now I'm looking through my scraps to find some papers to layer up behind the focal point photo. And I'm going to be only using layers behind one of the two photos essentially. So I'm cutting down this one. It almost looks like a watercolor painting with yellow and pink. And then I do it again with this pale green graph paper. A little bit later on you're going to see me do it with a text print as well, but I end up only using two of the three paper layers that I cut. I would also like to point out that I cut out my layers with a straight trimmer, which is what I often do. Rachel did hers with a pair of scissors and then she kind of roughed up the edges. Again, very much her style, but she absolutely rocks by the way. So there I go, cutting down this text print, which I absolutely love even though it would go on its side. That part doesn't bother me, but why I am hesitant to use it is because this is still at the beginning of the embellishment process and my plan is to add tons of layers. So I fear if I add too many prints at this point in the layers, I will get a very confusing look on the page or confusing for me anyway. 
you can see I've got all of my embellishing out around me. And I showed you I also had my title out on wax paper, which is pizza times three, and I will explain that later on. So what you saw me do there was simply place the two photos. I'm playing with the paper layers behind it. I had that giant circle there, that six inch circle up there in the top left. That piece of paper that has remember is actually one of the cut apart sheets. So those are my main pieces on the page. And then I come in with some ephemera pieces like you see the black one there, note to self, a little tab that says true story that I'm putting above that photo on the left. And then anyway, you can see I'm just playing around with little bits and pieces. I definitely have more to add, but at this point, I want to adhere my main pieces to the page. So before doing that, I am applying a bit of that very same ink, Morning Mist by Versifying Claire. So I do that to the paper layers. You can see at this point, I decided not to go with the text print. I absolutely love the look of it. I love that paper, but again, I feared that I would be adding too much to it. And in the end, if I add too much to it, it would take away from the photos and add more emphasis to my layers, which is not what I wanted to do here. So I have the block that says remember, along with the paper layers behind the photo, all inked up. And now I'm placing everything once again on the page. You see me there with a pencil. All I was doing was marking the corners of some of the main pieces so that I know where to place them when I adhere them. I am doing mine a little bit higher up than Rachel because of my photos, basically. The one over on the right, and my title is going to go underneath it, just like on Rachel's page, I needed room to put my title underneath it. So that's why I kind of bumped everything up towards the top of the page. So here I go, adhering all of the main parts to the page, and I'm coming in with an eraser there just to erase my pencil marks. You see me in the middle there, I didn't speak about it earlier, there's a little vellum pocket and it says life is good, and in that there's a little tag. One of the embellishment packs as part of this Sun Chaser collection is a collection of tags with these vellum pockets. They are absolutely gorgeous. And on Rachel's layout, I don't really see any journaling, so I plan to add journaling in that pocket on the tag later on. So I have all of the pieces I've decided upon adhered. I started adhering the title. I continued with that. And now I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to do some stamping on some of the labels. Heidi Swap's sticker collections have tons of labels. So I'm going to use one from the 6x12 sticker sheet and another one from the sticker book just to stamp a few things. So the first one I'm going to do is stamp the date. And I'm using a stamp set by P13 called Calendar Stamps in English, something like that. It will be listed below. I end up not using this label, but I'm leaving this part of the process in for two reasons. Number one, this stamp set is absolutely fantastic. I've been using it tons lately, and it's really not expensive. Also, I hope it's still available. If it is, I'll link it up below. And also, um, I wanted to point out that sometimes we try things and we just don't use them in the end. And that's really normal for me anyway, as part of the creative process. Now I'm using a second stamp set that I always use. It's called Vacay Phrases by Elizabeth Craft Designs. And on the label, I'm stamping delicious food. So I cleared up my stamps here. And now what I want to do is continue creating that cluster at the bottom. If you look at Rachel's layout underneath the title, she does have a cluster there. So I'm adding a little piece of ephemera. It says rainbows all day. And underneath it, another sticker that says, you make me happy. And this is just kind of tongue in cheek. It's all about this pizza that we ate three times during one week when we were on vacation. Even though you don't see pizza in the photos, this story, all I can think about is pizza because we are at a restaurant nearby a hotel where we were staying in the grill, Jamaica. And we've been there many times over many years and they just started serving pizza. And we thought we would try it because we are kind of pizza aficionados. We didn't have much hope, but it was absolutely delicious. And during the week, we went there three times. So anyway, that's kind of what this story is about. 
And while I was telling you that story, you can see I was kind of working on that cluster at the bottom. I had to remove the title a bit, but it went very well. And for the delicious food, I ended up putting it in that cluster at the top. I thought of putting it really on that white cardstock at the top left of the page, but I ended up actually incorporating it in that cluster on the above the photo on the left. I am not convinced about the date at the bottom. When I look at it on the screen, it looks fine, but in person, I just didn't like it. What you see me doing right now is just adding a bit of twine from my stash to that tag so people will know there's something to read or something to pull out there. And that is basically it. I hope you got an idea of how you can create a layout by using inspiration from a layout that may not be your style, but you find it visually appealing. You know, you end up playing, doing something completely different and coming up with something completely new. All I ended up doing off camera was my hidden journaling in that tag pocket. I did add a few chevrons pointing to that delicious food stamp label. Actually, those are fo photo corners from the sticker book that I repurposed by turning them on the side. Rachel used them in her layout as well, but she ended up using them as photo corners. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the Scrapbook Nerd YouTube channel, we would be absolutely thrilled if you did. And if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. And the same thing goes for my channel, Scrapbooking Quebec. Also, make sure you check out the Scrapbook Nerd online shop for these fun supplies and more. And also check out Rachel's video if you haven't already. Her link's below as well. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.